a subgroup um, a finitely generated subgroup of F2 uh, is codimension 1 if and only if this is a free group if and only if um, um, uh, if and only if it's infinite index okay so you can do that exercise while I do my exercise. And oh. just sorry, I forgot about this. I got punished. Is there one more? All right. Yeah, we'll leave that. We'll leave that for me to take a short break during the talk. Okay. Sorry. So, um, I want to talk a little bit about finiteness properties of the dual. Um, so, um, well, you, we had a group, we found some codimension one subgroups, we made a wall space, we created a dual cube complex, and now we have a group acting on a dual, uh, on this cat zero cube complex, but uh, um, often the dual, you know, arising from, um, you know, the, 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 the construction <coughs> um, is locally infinite, um, is infinite dimensional, right, has cubes of arbitrarily high dimension in it, right, and uh, uh, the, in, among the exercises you'll, right, if you, if, you have a, if you have three pairwise crossing walls, there's a three cube. If you have four pairwise crossing walls, you'd expect to see a four cube and so forth, so you're gonna, you'll, you'll, you'll be forced to look at that a little bit and consider that a little bit. Um, uh, and actually, uh, we, we heard about uh, Thompson's group, right? Um, so, let's see. Um, locally infinite, maybe the simplest example would be um, like a bass ser tree. Right, that's the, that's really, um, uh, uh, one of the simplest versions of this dual cube complex is really the Bass-Serre tree, and it's actually the case. Um, it's also uh, an, an, uh, an exercise, a lemma. What's the difference? Theorem. Huh? Everything is just an exercise, I think. Right? Um, it's a, uh, an ex example. All oh, right, I see. Yeah. E EX means example. Um, uh, if you have an amalgamated product, um, then the amalgamated subgroup has codimension one. Um, and likewise, pr provided that, you know, we're, we're going to assume that C is. Uh, is, 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 is not equal to A or B. So we're assuming that it's a, it's, it's a genuine splitting. Um, likewise, um, if you look at an H and N extension, 
then the edge group is co-dimension one. And really, the Basser tree ends up being, it's, it really is just a dual to, uh, to, to a wall system that you're creating with this co-dimension one subgroup. That's really all that's happening. That's why you're getting a tree. And there's, you know, it's a very nice type of co-dimension one subgroup. It's a co-dimension one subgroup, which it's a very nice co-dimension type of co-dimension one subgroup. It's a co-dimension one subgroup. It's a little bit heuristic, but this is, a, the, the, this is fairly close to the truth. It's, it's a, you had your group and you found the co-dimension one subgroup giving you walls that don't cross their translates. And so the dual is going to be, and so the dual is going to be a tree. Right? That's really the connection with the Basser tree. But um, unfortunately, um, typically what's going to happen is that the group is not going to act freely on this dual cube complex, this Basser tree, right? And there's a, people were really, really very concerned with the stabilizers of the vertices, right? And we know that in this case, they're conjugates of A and B, conjugates of the vertex groups, or con, con, you know, they're called vertex groups, they're conjugates of, 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 of A and B, right? Or the conjugates of, of, of A in, in the H and N extension case, okay? Um, what does this notation mean, a star ct equals d? Uh, this is a um, some, sometimes notation for an HNN extension. So um, have you heard of the notion of HNN extension? Okay, so then you'll, you'll learn about that and you'll find out. It's just a, it's a generalization of an amalgamated product, right? But if you, know, if you like co-dimension one subgroups, then you can first you know, do co-dimension one subgroups and then work your way down to the, one, to the case where you get a one-dimensional cube complex and then you'll, you'll know about Basser. You could, you, could, you could skip it, more or less. Okay. Is, uh, Assume that both C and D are proper subgroups, or one of them? It's not necessary. In, 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 in this case, it's not necessary for them to be proper subgroups. Ah, you can just have any, both could be. Sure, good. sure. Okay, so the, the, no, I'm not going to use this notation very much uh, as we proceed, so I'll just continue. Okay. Does it work backwards, too? If you get the dual complex is a tree, then you get a splitting? If the dual complex is a tree, that's the most important way that it works. If the dual complex is a tree, then you get an action on a tree. And Sarah's book is, if you've got an action on a tree, then it's a splitting, right? Okay, you can write a book about it. So um, the, we saw another, so I just wanted to mention, you know, the, the connection to the Basser tree, just not to be remiss. And we, we, we saw um, briefly, uh, Another, uh, um, so this is, this is sort of the classical case where you have locally infinite behavior because usually the action on the Basser tree, the, well, the, 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 the Basser tree is usually has a locally infinite vertices, right? Unless, unless the, the vertex groups were finite or the edge groups more generally were finite index in the vertex groups, but that t doesn't happen very often. Usually, usually the edge groups are not finite index in the vertex groups, and so the the, the, the vertex, the vertices in the Basser tree are, 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 are locally infinite, okay, which is one sort of pathology to a certain extent. Um, uh, a more interesting uh, uh, case, uh, it could be infinite dimensional, so there are some tubular groups that exhibit that behavior. But, um, more exciting, locally finite uh, um, <coughs> locally finite yet uh, but infinite dimensional uh, Kaiova, am I correct for Thompson's group? Okay, and I think the, the, the cube complex that you described, um, uh, which was described not not using the, um, this dual cube complex construction. It actually is a different way of getting to cube complexes, which is more, more closely related to um, what, what people call state complexes. Okay, so, so there are lots of pathological examples uh, and pathological behaviors around. Um, I am interested in, as, as you know, from the special cube complexes, I'm interested in the group not acting on a cube complex, 
in an arbitrary way, but actually being the fundamental group of a cube complex. So I want it to be acting freely. And e even though I, I, I said that I, you know, I, I'm open-minded and that not everything has to be compact, truth is that I prefer compactness. Okay? <laughs> so, um, well, here's some... So, so, we're, so we're looking for theorems that are going to give us control over the action of the group on the dual. So I want to describe a few to give you some sense of what's, of what's out there. So, um, so uh, Micha, one of the, you know, the, the first thing that he did, and, and to a certain extent the last uh, that, he, that he did in this topic until he came back to the topic uh, some years later, um, in, in, interested in the uh, cr uh, um, Kropholler conjecture, which is, you know, something a little bit esoteric, uh, he proved the following. Let, let G be hyperbolic and H be a codimension one subgroup that is also quasi-convex. Then the dual, right? So you, there's there's more things to do over here. You know, you have to choose a Cayley graph. You know, pick pick your walls. Choose what your partitions are going to be. But it, it doesn't matter what, what choices you make. The dual is G co-compact, right? In particular, it's it's finite dimensional, right? There are, right? If it's G co-compact. Right, and the, the, the group is acting, permuting the cubes around, right? The, 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 the maximal dimension of a cube, there's a bound to the, to the dimension of a cube over here. Now, here's another theorem that gives us um, some sense. Suppose that for each so it'll give us some sense of towards freeness of the action, right? This is towards co-compactness of the action. Suppose that for each um, non-trivial uh, element, little g, there exists a wall that cuts g in a sense that I'm not going to make totally precise. I'll draw you a picture. Um, then G acts freely on the dual. So this is now um, a setting. Let me maybe clarify. So what's what's the setting? I better specify that. I'm sorry. Right. So the the, the setting over here. Um, let G act on a wall space. Okay, so I have a wall space. There's a group which is acting on it. So the G is acting on the set and it's permuting the partitions around. It's permuting the walls around as it acts. Okay, and then as you can imagine, the, there's an induced action of G on the dual cube complex. And we're interested in, okay, what, could, what sort of thing could guarantee that the group will act freely on the dual to this wall space? Okay, and, and this is one of the uh, criteria that uh, comes in handy quite often. So what do I mean by cuts? Um, Um, in the sense that um, let's see uh, usually and there's a few ways of thinking about it you, you, usually uh, um, uh, how about this 
How about this? Um, let's choose a point in, in, the, in the wall space. Let's do it like that. So we have the identity times a point. So um, let S be some fixed point. Um, and what we'll do is we'll look at all translates of that point. by um, by, by, by powers of G and we want there to be some wall that has that, 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 that separates them into you know the, the, the translates which, which are you know negative, and the translates which are positive. Okay, um, we're a little more, we're, we're a little bit, um, it's a little more general than that. Um, we'd be okay with an orange wall that did that. And so eventually, you know, the, 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 the sufficiently Positive translates are going to be on one side of the wall, and sufficiently negative translates are going to be on the other side of the wall. So maybe I'll, I'll say that. Um, Here, S is a choice for one or a fixed Yeah, but just choose some point, just so that just so that we can identify group elements with with just we're looking at an orbit. Okay, we'll just choose choose some orbit. It, so this this definition won't depend upon the choice. Okay, so. Um, uh, So, um, in in practice, in, in practice, um, in 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 practice, w w our wall space often um, S has extra structure. You know, e.g. Um, uh, S S might be is a geodesic metric space as is the case when S is up epsilon right it's a nice geodesic metric space and um, a nice way of thinking about this is you know so so cutting uh, G G cutting uh, G, G uh, uh, W cutting G. It's W cutting G. Um, so let's let, let me say it like this. Then we would uh, um, G maybe has an axis. So maybe a nice geodesic, right? And that 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 the that the element G is is stabilizing, and the, the, the picture that we really like is, is something like this, where our wall cuts a nice geodesic axis. Okay, and the, you know, the, the axis kind of goes far away from the wall on, e on each side. And, and that's, that's really the motivating case. And it's, it's, not, it's not very difficult to, to prove that um, w when, when every element is, is cut, uh, um, by, by a wall, then um, uh, then it is impossible for a zero cube to get stabilized by, by a group element because you, you 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 try to imagine a zero cube which is which is stabilized and then you reach some type of contradiction in the in in, in, in the definitions of zero of, of of the way a zero cube behaves. I'm 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 not going to get lost. I'm, I'm not going to get lost in it right now. In, instead, I want to. Um, Uh, c c convey sort of one, one more thing, and I think all together they will give you a pretty good intuition about 
when a group will act freely. So here's another condition. Suppose that, right, so we're, we're still in this setting that uh, G is acting on a wall space, but we're going to assume that S is a metric space. Okay, this S is a nice metric space, right, like the Cayley graph is. Um, let's suppose that the number of walls separating two points, so this is me measured inside of the wall space, of course, is greater than or equal to, I don't know, a uh, distance between P and Q minus B for some, for some A and B. Suppose for some constants A and B, we had this property, which, is, which I, I like to call linear separation. linear separation, um, then actually you get uh, th th not, not only does G act freely, then, um, then the action of G on uh, the dual cube complex has a quasi-isometrically embedded, QI embedded orbit. Okay, so um, let me maybe say it like this, that the, there's a, th so there's a map from, the ca from a Cayley graph of G to the dual cube complex. There's a, there exists, there exists a QI embedding from the Cayley graph to the dual cube complex. It's not a, it's not a quasi isometry between them. The cube complex is probably much, much bigger than the group because of all of the, all of the surprise zero cubes that, that showed up. I mean, you know, in, in, in my, in, in my mind, uh, um, <coughs> there's a, well, I'll, 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 uh, I'll draw a picture of that in a moment. Um, uh, talking about freeness now, what you should absorb from this is somehow um, the is, is somehow that the so the intuition. So in the theorem, what is the assumption on G? G, let's let G be a finally generated group so that we can give it some nice metric. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the, the culture over here, by the way, is we usually just care about finally generated groups. You know, maybe countable, but usually just finally generated. So G is a finally generated group, and it's, uh, um, it's acting on a, on a wall space, and uh, um, so that we can compare the number of walls with a metric, um, there's, a, there's, there's a metric on the wall space, right? So, so this, the, the, the picture for that uh, um, criterion um, it, maybe I'll reuse this picture over here. The picture for that, uh, I'll, 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 draw, I'll draw a new picture. So the picture for that criterion is that we've got P and Q, and right, there's a certain distance between P and Q in our wall space. And we want the, the number of walls that are separating P and Q to be roughly proportional to the distance between them. Okay. Now, it's a, it's a tricky, I mean, th 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 this is giving you, um, it's, it's, this is saying that it's lower bounded by the distance between them, but <coughs> the way the finiteness properties go, 
you, 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 you can never expect more than a linear number of walls as candidates. Okay, so um, <coughs> this is the best. This is the best you can hope for. Is it act by isometry? Okay, so um, uh, does what act by isometry? G act on the cube complex. It's acting by isometry. You're on the, on the wall space S. with metric okay. structure. So that, yes, thank you. But you need some faithfulness to embed the, the Kelly graph in C. You need something about... Okay, so all of this is, you know, the sort of generalizations of the group acting on its Cayley graph. Okay, and you're, you're saying that if it, didn't, if it didn't act faithfully over here, then you wouldn't be able, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't expect that the, wall, that, 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 that the walls are going are, are gonna to lead to faithful actions on, on, the, on the cube complex. Well, pro well, it might. I don't know. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm going to assume that it's acting. Usually, usually what we do is we act, uh, um, the, we usually act properly. So, so we, we will often add a little bit of, a, a little bit of, uh, th there could be a, a little bit of finite stabilizers is the situation that we normally are considering, okay? But you don't have to make, if you're, when you're first learning about this, don't make everything so difficult by thinking about grand generalities. Think of, um, uh, t two cases, one, one is that you, you have a group acting on a Cayley graph, and the other case that you should be thinking of is a, a group acting on hyperbolic space, right? And you're going to have walls in hyperbolic space coming from co-dimension one subgroups in hyperbolic space. Okay, that's, that's the other type of situation that you should be, you should be thinking about over here. Now, um, if you just require that the number of walls separating P and Q is going to infinity as the distance between P and Q goes to infinity, you'll still get something. So maybe I'll just say that over here. Um, if the number of walls separating P and Q goes to infinity as the distance between P and Q goes to infinity, so as, 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 the, as two points are getting farther and farther away from each other, the number of walls separating them is, is increasing. Um, uh, then uh, that will be enough to know that um, that uh, um, G uh, um, uh, that that the then the map from epsilon to C. So the or or, or if you prefer the the orbit instead of being quasi-asymmetrically embedded, it, it, it will be um, met metrically properly embedded. Okay, it'll, it, it'll, it, it'll, uh, um, uh, so, the, so the orbit of the cube complex is going to be kind of sufficiently spread out inside of the, in, in, in the orbit of G in the cube complex is going to be sufficiently spread out. This is enough, you know, at, this is the minimal amount that we want. Um, but, but that's probably the one that you should be looking at. The intuition is really, I got, I'm kind of getting a little bit uh, out from where I wanted to focus. The, the intuition is, is that if the walls cut the wall space very well into small pieces, Then the group will act nicely, meaning freely, properly, with finite stabilizers, on the dual cube complex. And that's what both of these statements are really telling you. And, and cutting, cu cutting it up 
means what you think it does. Okay, so that's the intuition. But you have to be very, very careful. Okay, but it's, unfortunately, um, this really, you know, this is a soft statement, so I'm, you know, nobody can criticize me about this because, you know, it doesn't mean anything. But the, um, but the, uh, unfortunately, um, it's hard to tell. So you can be fooled, easily fooled. Um, why? Well, you know, you have these points P and Q, and it's looking good. Looks like there are lots of walls separating them, right? But maybe. Maybe it was all the same wall. Um, hey, they're not even separated. Okay, so this is um, this is a pitfall that often occurs when we're we're, we're studying this. You know, um, w w when we're trying to recognize that we found enough walls when we found enough walls to, 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 to actually have an interesting action of G on the cube complex, we, 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 you know, we're, we're looking to see that we've cut it up many, many ways, but we can, you can get into some trouble. And these statements are all just trying to pinpoint what's happening so that the intuition, which you know, should be guiding you, um, the, uh, um, isn't going to give you too much guidance and send you in the wrong direction. So, well, we would like to see that there really are actual walls separating them. It shouldn't just look like you're chopping it up into little pieces. Okay? Um, or, you know, this, this, is, this is enough as well to, to, to ensure it. Let's, um, let's look at uh, uh, an exciting uh, um, uh, thing that happened a few years ago um, that uh, in, in, in increased the interest in the topic uh, for people who were not yet uh, believers. So, um, uh, Khan and Markovich uh, proved that the fundamental group uh, um, of a hyperbolic manifold contains many, many um, quasi-convex uh, co-dimension one. That has to be the case. Closed surface subgroups. And so the setting over here is uh, let M be a closed hyperbolic manifold. Now, um, it's a general fact that uh, um, actually another example is that if I, I think I, I think I, st I stated this uh, already that an n uh, a an, 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 in for or orientable n-dimensional manifold subgroup a closed orientable a, a closed orientable n-dimensional manifold subgroup inside of an orientable n plus one-dimensional manifold. Did I, did I state it on uh, or last, last, last hour? No. No, I didn't. So um, if um, 
if you have an inclusion if you have an, inc an inclusion of of uh, um, f of fundamental groups of closed orientable manifolds an n an n manifold fundamental group in an n plus 1 manifold fundamental group then you get a codimension 1 subgroup which is you know the motivation for the for the name over here right for the terminology um, <coughs> although during the break I was you know someone was complaining that uh, um, the 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 trivial subgroup is a codimension one subgroup in a cyclic group which is a codimension one subgroup in a free group of rank two so you don't want to get too you don't want to get too, too uh, um, uh, attached to notions of dimension here but this is the mo this is the motivation for, for the language so these are all co-dimension one so the, dim the dimension didn't drop here but then it dropped over there okay. <coughs> all right so Kahn and Markovich gave us um, uh, um, uh, uh, answering a you know, long-standing problem about hyperbolic three-manifolds, they gave us uh, quasi-convex co-dimension one, uh, uh, quasi-convex surface subgroups, which of course are co-dimension one. It's a general, it's a general all-purpose fact. And <coughs> so, in fact, there's various ways to uh, um, think about why this is the case, but we, we then can deduce, so using sufficiently many, right, maybe two, three, maybe ten of them, of these surface subgroups and applying the dual cube complex construction, we obtain a free co-compact action of the fundamental group of this three manifold on a cat zero cube complex. So um, this is a corollary to their um, to, to, to their <coughs> discovery. Um, the co-compactness of the action is just coming from Sagiv's observation. Okay. The freeness of the action is coming from the fact that there are many. You could choose so many surface subgroups you could choose so many surface subgroups that when you look at the hyperbolic uh, three space, in fact, what they showed was that for any two points in the boundary of hyperbolic three space, they found a a closed surface subgroup, so this is, the, this is the universal cover of our manifold, Kahn and Markovich found that for any two points um, you could find a surface, probably very high genus, um, whose universal cover uh, maps pi 1 injectively into the manifold, but when you look at the induced map between the universal covers, right, so this is the universal cover of, our, of my surface over here, um, and it has a nice yellow boundary at infinity, I guess, it, 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 you could think of it as hyperbolic plane, and it, it very nearly
So if you choose a circle right, that separates the two red points on the boundary, Kahn and Markovich can choose this, this, yellow, this, this surface, S, so that its, it, it, its universal cover comes so close to this orange hyperbolic plane over here that actually its, its boundary kind of looks like that. Just kind of comes, travels right along nearby it. And this yellow boundary circle, right, of, of the universal cover of our surface, right, which is, um, uh, which, which you're looking at and you're saying, that's, that's going to be a very good wall, right? Um, uh, it, 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 this surface manages to separate these two points at infinity. So, with, with that, you can actually choose sufficiently many of these. And by some compactness argument, you can, you can actually, and of course, you can use all of their translates, as we discussed, right? You, 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 maybe you've chosen seven of these, plus all of their translates. You actually get into a situation where you're going to, you're, you're going to cut this up sufficiently well. And so you know that the action is also uh, going to be free. It's not just co-compact, which is a generality from Sagiv's uh, um, you know, theorem, but it's, but it's actually going to be free because you've cut hyperbolic space up sufficiently well. Okay, in, in uh, you could you, you could you could do it like that as well. Um, so we know that our uh, three manifold is actually the fundamental group of a compact cube complex. And, 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 you know, from there, of course, we, uh, we hope that we could show that the, that, that, that cube complex has a special finite cover, right, which is what, what we were talking about uh, yesterday. And, that, and that's what happened in the end. That was the plan. So one would like to uh, hope that um, every closed um, hyperbolic manifold is pi 1 of a compact, non-positively curved cube complex, right? But the, the main thing that we are missing, and we're, you know, we're probably very far away from that, is to, to understand where the walls are going to come from, right? Um, people, people knew to be interested in finding these walls even before they knew what to do with them, right? They wanted to find these surface subgroups, very useful to, to, to cut a three-manifold along a surface subgroup. Right, and there hasn't uh, obviously hasn't been uh, as much interest yet um, in in finding uh, in, in finding uh, ways of cutting four manifolds along. It doesn't have to be. It won't. It won't be along three manifolds. It'll be along something. Okay, um, along some quasi-convex co-dimension one subgroups, and to find enough of them so that your so that your four manifold um, is, it, it, its universal cover is going to give you a nice wall space, and you could do the same thing, right? And so your hyperbolic four manifold is also going to be the fundamental group of a non-possibly curved cube complex. It's, it, this is all conjectural. This is what I believe mostly because I want it to be true, right? Because it means that cube complexes are the glorious uh, um, answer to many things, right? But that's, that's what I've uh, felt for about 20 years, um, uh, just because I didn't know how to understand anything else. So. Now, for three manifolds, by the way, maybe 
a little, we could spend a little time talking about that because uh, we heard about three manifolds yesterday. <laughs> for, for, for three manifolds, um, uh, so, so uh, you know, theorem, uh, almost all compact three manifolds Have uh, have the property that pi one of m is is the fundamental group of a non-positively curved cube complex. Okay, but uh, often not compact. So. Um, some exceptions um, some exceptions uh, um, well uh, nil and sol um, and uh, um, uh, um, I think PSL to tilde um, I think I haven't thought about that in a long time. Um, the more more serious exceptions are, which are a little bit uh, um, interesting, certain closed graph manifolds. Okay, but if you if you for instance took uh, took a few hyperbolic Three manifolds, and you glued them together along their tori. So I just write H for hyperbolic. So these are little hyperbolic pieces. Right? If the JSJ decomposition were non-trivial, and for instance, all of the all of the pieces, were they called pieces yesterday in the JSJ decomposition, or blocks? Pieces, I think. Yeah? Well, if all the pieces in the JSJ decomposition are hyperbolic, um, then this is actually the fundamental group of a um, non positively curved cube complex. Um, not necessarily compact, but you could still, but it's still virtually special. Okay, and so the sort of the special specialness is really working very nicely together with hypervelocity over here. Um, I should probably uh, spend a few minutes um, mentioning, listing some other examples. Um, uh, we heard about Coxeter groups. So every Coxeter group Finally generated Coxeter group is equal to the fundamental group of X, where X is a non-positively curved cube complex. Um, this is uh, Niblo and Reeves, and also, if I'm not mistaken, Pierre Pansu didn't publish it, um, and they were using the um, wall space uh, construction, not con you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure if they, if they, if they knew, had the words wall, they knew of the, the terminology wall space already, but it was, it, it, it was pretty clear, you know, that what, what, what the uh, essence of Sagiv's construction was, and, and they used the reflection walls that I spoke about, uh, or that, that I mentioned just briefly before. Um, uh, however, X is, X is not um, uh, compact. Oh, and I, I said something wrong. This is incorrect. Um, a a, a Coxeter group has torsion, of course, and uh, a non-positively curved cube complex, um, as Ruth mentioned, uh, its universal cover is contractible, but you know, if, if, if it's compact, you're certainly not going to have, these are finite dimensional. finite dimensional 
So let me state this correctly. Um, uh, so I'll say is virtually, so it has a finite index subgroup, which is the fundamental group of such a thing. And let me state it a little bit more accurately. Um, uh, let's call the group G. G acts properly on a finite dimensional cat zero cube complex. Okay, so that's a little bit more correct. And actually, here too, here too, um, uh, there exists G prime contained in G such that G prime acts freely. Let's call this cat zero cube complex X tilde. There exists G prime contained in G so that G prime acts freely. And in fact, X tilde mod G prime is special. So all Coxeter groups using Sagiv's construction on the walls, you get a, uh, um, uh, an action on a cat zero cube complex, which you know the, dim the dimension goes up uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, uh, but it's something organized that you can understand, and then you can pass to a finite index subgroup and, and, and see that your Coxeter group is virtually inside of a rag like this, okay, which is the sort of continuing theme. Um, if you've heard of hyperbolic arithmetic <coughs> lattices um, of simple type, they also uh, fall to this approach. Also, um, Um, uh, act uh, on uh, cat zero cube complex and are virtually special. So the uh, um, there were discussions of uh, arithmetic lattices at the last at the beginning of last week. Is that correct? But you, you were probably talking about bad lattices that were that had property T, is that right? Yeah, those are they're dead already. So, um, um, I have about three or four minutes to wrap to wrap things up. So uh, maybe I'll describe one more suggestive example, which is really uh, you know my my interests are to con con convey the intuition of. You know when when the procedure uh, when 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 this procedure of using Sagiv's construction is going to be uh, um, is 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 going to work. So and 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 maybe um uh, maybe it's a good idea also to mention a, a, a an example in regards to the Coxner groups. So. Um, cat zero two complexes were discussed here last last week, the week before last week, maybe, <laughs> huh? Not really. That. Not really. Okay. Hmm. Let me then change the. I won't. I won't try to do that. I'll change the topic entirely and, s and close with one with another thing of a different flavor. So, um, let me talk about uh, a combination theorem. So this is with, with, with Tim Shu. Um, if G is equal to an amalgamated product. Where um, G is hyperbolic and C is quasi convex, and 
A and B are um, virtually um, fundamental groups of non-positively curved, uh, of, of compact, let's just say compact, special cube complexes. then G is the fundamental group of a non, where X is a non-positively curved cube complex that is compact. Okay, so, so sometimes you can take two non-positively curved cube complexes and you can glue them together, right? That's maybe the you know, simplest case. You might just have cube complex number one in cube complex number two, and then create an amalgamated product of them, right? That's the, and, and well, if you glue them together, we know that if you're gluing them together along, you know, local, local isometries, then maybe you might be lucky and you can actually, the, the, the object that you get might, might already be a non-positively curved cube complex. But usually it's not. Usually it's a huge mess, okay? But, um, in a very good situation where the uh, where x1 and x2 are uh, are are special and uh, um, the, the amalgamated subgroup C this is A and this is B when C is quasi convex uh, you can actually um, you you can actually get this whole group the fundamental group of this of this new space to to, to be acting on a cat zero cube complex so how would you do that? Well, you, huh? What? You, you, you find walls because you don't really. There isn't another way of doing it. You, you, you somehow find walls, and so, you know, you, you, you'd look, you'd look inside of this, of this object, and you'd say, let me. F and you're kind of looking for. It's almost like you're looking if it were a three manifold, right? If this were a three manifold, what you'd be doing is you'd be look. You'd say, okay, there must be a surface in here somewhere. Right, and you hope hope to find one, and the same thing is happening over here. You're 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 looking for kind of immersed walls inside, right? And maybe you found one, right? You have to be very careful about it. Hopefully, it's 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 going to correspond to something which, in the universal cover of this object, is going to give you an honest wall, and hopefully, it'll be quasi convex, and then maybe you will have to find another one. And perhaps, perhaps you'll, you'll, you'll ob observe that, oh, there's already one waiting for you right over here. Right, because that, 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 edge, that edge group right over here is going to be a nice wall. Right? And then, you know, you, you have the universal cover. You, you have the picture of all of these walls cutting it up. And that's how you'll get a, an action of the amalgam on, on, a, on a cube complex. And this is, you know, how the subject pr pr has, has been progressing, and there's a lots of things that uh, we don't know. There's lots of things as we, as, as we drop hyperbolicity, then it's, it, you know, it, it, trying to generalize, trying to generalize, uh, you know, this statement over here, it, 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 it has a generalization to a relatively hyperbolic setting, but there are, you know, as, as you increase the, the sort of group that you want to apply this to, because, you know, hyperbolic groups are amazing, but those are the easy groups that are easy to understand. What about the difficult groups? So, so then you, as you, as, as you stretch this, uh, things get messier and more complicated, and you try to, you, 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 you try to extend uh, what we've done in the hyperbolic case, and it's, uh, it's going to get, uh, it's going to get more and more uh, complicated, as that's the way math goes. So, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>